So you're on the edge of your seat, thinking about finally taking the leap to a direct drive wheel and maybe even buying some load cell brake pedals and just want a normal guy with normal guy's expectations to actually show you everything in as much detail as possible so that you can feel extra confident leaving that Logitech G29 behind and finally taking this leap or you actually already took the leap and just want to hear someone else talk about it, then uh, boy or girl, do I have a video for you. Keep in mind that I'm only a normal guy dipping my toes into the sim racing world. Like any other hobby, there are things that more seasoned sim racers just are used to and expect, but keep in mind that like with any other hobby, this is a journey and not really just a destination. And for people like me jumping into it fresh, my perspective and my expectations are probably gonna be a little bit different than you guys have. And I think that's okay. This is the Fanatec GTD Pro, a true paradigm shift when it comes to direct drive wheels. And long gone are the days where you have to pay thousands to get a taste of this incredible force feedback, because that's it. That's its biggest claim to fame. The smooth and incredibly precise force feedback. And I mean, the only thing you're actually compromising in comparison to higher end wheels is just peak power. But if you're coming from a G29 or T300, this will feel so powerful that you probably will feel slightly worried about people having to deal with wheels more powerful than this. So, um... It's, it's not weak, that's for sure. The motor itself is completely silent, which is just a massive bonus compared to the gear grinding sound that you always got with Logitech wheels, and even compared to belt-driven wheels. So if you have someone sleeping nearby and just want to get some laps in, you absolutely can do. If you're somehow still confused, the only difference between the CSLDD and the GTDD Pro is the fact that the GTDD Pro is also PlayStation compatible. So if you're looking into, I don't know, just playing only on PC, you can definitely save a little bit of money by going with the CSLDD, but uh, it's more difficult to find in stock more often, and particularly if you if you don't want to buy the 8 meter version of with the boost kit and pay that extra tax on top, uh, it's definitely more difficult to find in stock, so if you want a GTDD Pro, for example, you can find them in stock right now, but um, I'll touch on that a little bit more later in the video. Now, the Fanatec ecosystem can be a little intimidating at first, but there are only a couple of things that you really need to know. You buy the motor, the wheel, and the pedals all separate. You can get them in a bundle, but chances are you probably can get more for your money if you pick and choose where you actually want to spend your budget. My setup consists on the DD Pro with the 8 new meter boost kit, the CSL pedals with the load cell upgrade, and the McLaren GT3 wheel. The only thing that isn't super value optimized in my setup is the fact that I paid for the overpriced, in my opinion, boost kit, which is just a glorified 180 watt power supply that you can find in the aftermarket for around 50 euros. Problem is, it, it, most of the time it's quite difficult to find the GTDD Pro 5 nm version in stock because, you know, Fanatec knows that it's a better deal and they are overpricing the boost kit and that's pretty much probably how they make the money back so uh, keep that in mind when you're shopping around uh, yes you can find the boost kit but you really need to find the 5 meter version in stock first to actually be able to save around 100 euros making that trade when it comes to choosing a wheel you simply have to ask yourself am i going to be using this wheel on pc and xbox or on pc and playstation some wheels don't support both and even if the gtdd pro supports both xbox and playstation you need to make sure that your wheel also supports supports both if you plan on switching between them. In my case, I went with the McLaren GT3 wheel since I plan on playing mostly F1 and GT style sims and also because it looks and feels just great and it's compatible with everything. I can understand that for some people that have been into sim racing for years, this might feel a little cheap and lack some of the premium materials, but for a normie like me that's first taking a peek into this world, this wheel feels as good as it looks. The rubber grips feel super grippy and the magnetic paddles are an absolute joy to machine gun down the gears in F1. 
And if you know my passion for mechanical keyboards, you know how I appreciate a good switch when I see one, and some of these are just click heaven. I've also found it a little bit tricky to just use all the switches on the wheel, since in some games you have to manually assign them in the settings, and remembering all that when you're already using 99% of your brain to keep the car on the road has felt like a, a little bit too much. But you know, with time, I expect that to definitely change. On the back of the wheel, you have the quick release system that came with the wheel, and some people have expressed some concern that it might not be good enough or last long enough, and after using it for a little bit, I definitely see where that's coming from. I started to notice a very slight notch when doing a fast sharp turn and the force feedback kicks in that wasn't really there in the beginning, and I definitely think it's related to this, but I don't feel it all the time, so it isn't really something to worry about too much. To address this issue, I saw a comment of one of you guys, and I also seen it on Reddit, that adding a little bit of cardboard on top of the center column could help, and a combination of doing that and tightening the center a little bit more has completely fixed the issue for now. But I'll keep an eye out for the future when Fanatec updates their QR2 metal quick release system, and depending on how my fix lasts, I might consider buying it. I was indecisive between the McLaren wheel and the Formula 1 V2 wheel, and I ended up going with the McLaren because it looks great and it's cheaper, but at the end of the day, the Formula One wheel has the vibration motors in the grips and it also has the metallic quick release system. So the price difference is a little bit more justified when you take that into consideration. Under consideration, not in their consideration. No idea what that was. The CSL pedals come in at just 80 euros and they are as simple as they are robust. And if you're looking into a place where you could probably save a little bit of money, this might be it. Just the basic set feels much better than the Logitech pedals ever did, and the upgradability of them is just incredible. You can get started now with the stock two pedals and later on add a load cell upgrade for the brake pedal for a completely different experience, and you can transform the stock brake pedal into a clutch, which in my opinion makes the clutch add-on something to completely avoid. Installing these on the GT Lite was super easy and only involved a quick trip to the hardware store to buy some 25 millimeter M6 bolts that, in my opinion, Fanatec should just included some screws in the box, but I get it, not all cockpits are the same, but with a little bit of a market research, they could have pretty much covered everyone with a couple of screws and just be done with it. Now, having the pedals bolted in place is a huge game changer if you're used to Logitech pedals. Having a load cell pedal is, is just so much of an upgrade, as much as having the direct drive wheel almost. So a combination of the two things does absolute wonders for your lap to lap consistency. I couldn't really wrap my head around what makes a load cell so much better, but after a couple of weeks, I totally get it. Instead of having a pedal that travels far, the more you press it, you have a very stiff pedal that moves very little, but measures the pressure you apply. And this is a very similar feel to what you have on a race car, for example, where brake pedals are not notoriously stiff. So if you get a load cell pedal and trying it for the first time and feel like something has to be off, just stick with it for a week or two and you will quickly get used to it and be more consistent than ever. At least that was my experience. You can also look online for aftermarket elastometers, which are the rubber bits or plastic bits that define how much the pedal travels when you press it, and you can completely customize to your heart's content just how much you want it to move. But in my opinion, stick with it for a good while and then make that decision if you still feel like it's too stiff and doesn't feel too great. You definitely can get used to a stiffer pedal. It's all a matter of personal preference. We have the cockpit, and I've read all your comments, and of course I did lots of research before committing to the GT Lite, so I know some of the compromises that I made, but I also, you know, know my circumstance and know what I can do and not do, but um, uh, let's talk about that. There's a lot of worry about a wheelbase this powerful in a folding rig, but in my experience, after tightening the side strap with the back of the seat closed, so that once it's opened, it's putting even more tension on it, and using 
using the included black strap on the right side as tight as possible makes the rig substantially stiffer than it was when it was stock and in my humble opinion it's quite pleasant to race in. Yes the rig is fully foldable and can be completely collapsed to a small thing but unless you have the patience of a monk I don't expect you to fold it and unfold it after every session and for the most part I simply collapsed the back of the seat and tucked the pedals in and just pushed it into a corner of the room which is very doable since it isn't super super heavy and on carpet it just slides away with no problems. It takes me a minute to set up and a minute to put away and that's always what you want to go for since if you take a really long time to get everything set up and it's finicky you always have to adjust it just right to the place that it was before you're just gonna spend less time racing and you're not gonna want to play as often because you know who wants to deal with an entire setup every time they want to sit down and drive so if you have 80 centimeters long by 60 centimeters wide in a corner of your room for example you can definitely have this thing tucked away and you're always just a minute away from racing which is a much needed upgrade even for me that I had to tighten everything down to the table and place the pedals like they were before back when I had the, the G29 this is a massive upgrade and something that I've been really enjoying. I can't really dedicate the space permanently to it and the smaller nature of this cockpit was appealing but like anything yes it comes with compromises. Yes it isn't as rigid as some other cockpits but it is as rigid as all other foldable cockpits and with the straps it's probably as tight as you can get for the money. It's also comparable to most wheel stands since even though those will have stiffer wheel decks and have less movement there you have to deal with other kinds of movement that you can only completely remove by going with a full rig and by then it's too heavy and too large to move around let alone it's much much more expensive. I paid around 160 euros for mine and for that kind of money you can't really get a metal rig with a chair and even if you could I simply don't have the space for it. For now the rig feels very good and I'm happy with the price to performance ratio that I'm getting out of it but one small detail that you simply can't run away from is that you can't really put a hundred percent brake force it's it's simply impossible. You will lift off the the ground if you weigh under 70 kilos like I do and you will struggle to put down more than 80% brake force. Thankfully you can lower the maximum brake force in the software making it just right for you so you can quickly get to 100% brake force while still retaining a decent amount of control to modulate the pedal. Most of the talk about the stiffness and the undesirable movement on the GT Lite is simply just physics being physics and if you want stiffness and zero movement you need something with high inertia and a good overall overall design and you can't really get something small, compact, lightweight but solid as a rock. The compromise will always have to come from somewhere be that space in your house, money in your wallet or stiffness and rigidity and even if I'm losing some percentage of force feedback fidelity this still feels miles better than anything that I've ever tried before and more importantly it motivates me to get out there and race as often as I can. Overall and I think you can tell I'm more than happy about this purchase decision and I couldn't you know just be more excited about experimenting with different games like for example I can't wait to finally play some GT7 I first just only need to convince my best friend to actually make the same decision he was on the exact same boat as I was so um I'll tell you like I, I, I I'm gonna tell him uh, let's let's do this one message you know Fabio my guy um insert your name here um if you're not Fabio but if you're Fabio cool for you Fabio my guy um if you have the money laying around and you aren't making any huge compromises for yourself or your family, um, life's too short. Um, treat, treat yourself. It's the best day of the year. Right. Um, I'm going to go play a little bit. Bye.